Okay, uh, in this uh, video, we'll take a look at the basis three board uh, for our uh, FPGA work. So here is the brand new uh, basis three board. Uh, we'll be using the Xilinx Vivado software uh, in order to run uh, on this. So let's uh, basically take this out and take a good look at what's uh, what the board looks like. So we'll go quickly over the features of the board and then in the next video I'll show you how to uh, basically use this particular board uh, to program your FPGA. So here is here is the brand new Basis 3 board. Okay, So this board uh, comes with a number of features. So if, uh, we have 16 switches, uh, up-down switches. Uh, we also have five buttons, push buttons, so uh, that are uh, configured in the left, right, up, down, and the center uh, button right here. Uh, there are 16 LEDs directly above these switches right here. So we have 16 switches, 16 corresponding LEDs uh, directly there, and then we have five uh, buttons for the input. So our traditional inputs for most of the things that we'll do in this class are going to be basically a combination of these three things. In addition, we also have four seven-segment displays. These seven-segment displays are time multiplexed, and we'll go over what that is uh, later on uh, during the uh, during the class. Uh, so these are the four seven-segment displays, uh, time multiplexed. So those are essentially the most of the IOs. Now, in order to power this, you don't need a separate uh, connector. All you do is take a micro USB cable, connect it. So I have a micro USB cable connected to it. And then if I hit the power button, uh, it will uh, basically, you can see the power light right here. Okay. Uh, one of the things uh, to consider here is uh, how do you download code later on onto this board? There are three ways to download code. One is to use a USB flash drive uh, on, on this USB. So there's a regular USB port right here. We can add a USB flash drive. Uh, you can use uh, a SPI uh, mode. Q quad SPI mode to program this. And then finally, the easiest one, and then the one we'll use is called the JTAG mode. Okay, so for that, we gotta be careful. So there's there's a three pin header right here. There's a three pin header right here, which basically determines which way, how we're gonna program this. So this three pin header, uh, we need to set the jumper correctly on this. So uh, if you look at right here, it says the jumper setting in the middle is JTAG. So it's essentially what that means is if I have my jumper set up on the top two pins like this, okay, I am asking this board to accept all the programs through Quad SPI. Okay? If I set my jumper at the bottom two pins as such, I'm asking my board to set up the uh, set up this particular board using a USB drive that's connected here. However, for most of the work we're going to do, we're going to use this USB micro USB and use JTAG to program the board. So to do that, we need to make sure that our jumper is set up right in the middle two pins like that. So that's the first thing to always check on your board. Otherwise, uh, most of the time we'll try to download the board and it will say that it can't find the board and most likely uh, the cause is essentially that. Okay, so so far we've looked at the inputs right here, outputs, 16 LEDs, seven, four seven segment displays, power port is this particular USB cable right here, power as well as for bit file which configures the FPGA. This is the RTX 7 FPGA right here. So we'll configure this RTX FPGA through this USB uh, port by making sure that the jumpers are set up correctly to allow the flow of data from there to there. Okay, so those are essentially um, the most important ones right now. Now, uh, I just showed you how to power this board during, directly using an USB. However, if you are using this, uh, with external power supply. Here is another jumper right here. So the power jumper right here uh, is, if you look carefully here, it says USB and then it says external, EXT. So if I set the jumper setting to the top part right here and I turn on the power, you see that the power light does not go on, right? So my power, 
the switch is on, but I have this to external. So it's expecting an external uh, power from outside, and you have to be careful that this power should be only between 5 volt and ground. Okay, so that's an external power. Uh, could be used for battery operation or for putting this board on the field, as we say. All right, so let's put the jumper back to our normal USB, and I'll turn it on, and here we have uh, the board power turned on. The LED come, came on, right? Okay. All right. Uh, so those are some of the features of the board so far. Now, let's talk about the main FPGA. So this main FPGA right here is the Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA, right? It's a Xilinx 7 FPGA, and it has about 33,000 logic cells that can be programmed, okay? It has a fast uh, uh, memory uh, block RAM, which can store up to 1,800 kilobits of data, okay? Uh, for it also has uh, a built-in Xilinx ADC, so analog to digital conversion. For the, our class, we're not going to use the Xilinx ADC. Okay, uh, so some of the, some those are some of the features of that particular FPGA. Now, in our case, there are four other ports that can be used for input and output. Okay, these are called uh, PMOD connectors. These are fairly standard. PMOD is a now a standard. Uh, way of uh, communicating with boards from Digilent. Uh, it can be used for other boards as well, but it's one of the one of the standards. So in our class, if we do use external devices, we'll use PMOD connectors. PMOD connectors, you could potentially connect, let's say, a, a Wi-Fi module or a Bluetooth module to this board through these four connectors. So these are the four PMOD connectors right here. Okay. Here is a output analog video output, the uh, VGA output. Uh, which uh, students have successfully used in the past in their final project in the course. So that is a, another potential output uh, for this board. Right? So that's basically a general overview of the board that you'll be using in the course. Next, what we'll do is we'll look at how to use the Xilinx Vivado. So this particular board requires the use of the Xilinx uh, Vivado software. Okay? Vivado software can be downloaded for free uh, from the Xilinx website. Uh, you can have a, your own copy of Vivado uh, if you would like. Uh, in our course, for this particular semester, we're going to use the uh, Vivado 18.2 version uh, of the uh, software. Okay. So next, I'll show you how to create a design uh, on Xilinx Vivado and download to this board. So we'll do a very simple design uh, where we'll basically say, if I turn on the switch, the LED will turn off. And if I turn down the switch, the LED will turn on. So we'll do opposite logics and see uh, how that's done. Okay, so uh, we'll do that in the next video.